Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is a personal project that I'm doing now. It's a sort of aside from my normal kind of prop making work. Uh, I follow Click Spring on YouTube. Um, he's an absolutely fantastic producer of videos and he has got me obsessed with the Antikythera mechanism. It seems to be a very deep rabbit hole that I'm, I'm falling down, so thanks for that, Chris. Um, but as soon as he finishes his work on that project and releases the uh, the plans that he's drawn, uh, I'm certainly going to embark on making a, um, a replica of the Antikythera mechanism. Uh, if you don't know what the Antikythera mechanism is, then be careful. As I say, it's a very deep rabbit hole. Um, I'll put a link in the description uh, to Chris's uh, YouTube videos because he explains it a lot better than I ever could. As an aside, uh, he's also made a replica of the uh, second oldest uh, geared mechanism, the Byzantine sundial uh, calendar, uh, also sometimes known as the London sundial calendar. This is an object in the Science Museum in London and it was uh, first replicated by uh, Michael Wright. He did a lot of work on the Antikythera mechanism as well and as a sort of early pioneer of the technology of the Antikythera mechanism. Uh, but he also um, uh, did a lot of work with the um, Byzantine sundial calendar and made the first replica of it. Um, now Chris uh, over on Clickspring has uh, drawn up a set of plans which are available to his Patreon uh, members. I've been supporting Chris as a, as a Patreon um, supporter now for some years actually. So I've, I, I've got a set of the, uh, of the plans and as a sort of a hobby project, I decided I was going to um, make the uh, Byzantine sundial calendar. To use Chris's plans, but to make it a bit more um, in keeping with the original by using uh, triangular tooth forms and, um, and pins rather than screws and that type of thing. Okay, so uh, I'll try and uh, video as much of the process as I can and, uh, and let you follow on. If you want to see it made properly, head over to Clickspring and um, uh, he does really beautiful uh, videography and, and his videos are the how-to on how to make one of these in the home workshop. Uh, I may differ with some of my processes from how uh, Chris does it. Everybody's individual on how they um, they make, make things, it's however you have the, what tools you have available to you and how you're comfortable using them. I will get stuck in and I hope you enjoy following along. Got my big aluminium faceplate that I'm going to um, um, put some grooves in and use as a super glue chuck. That will enable me to turn the outer diameter of this disc, which is going to be the base of the front dial bowl. Um, I've also got this here, which this ring, uh, which is going to be the um, uh, the outer ring of the uh, front dial bowl. I didn't have a long enough um, piece of brass. So I had to, I'm going to have to put two solder joints in. So what I've done is I've done the first uh, joint here and um, I'm just trying to get the, uh, the loose shape of the, uh, of the ring. And then what I've done is I've clamped them together and I'm going to make a, a cut with the bandsaw straight through here. It will enable me to uh, finalize the fit. This from strip, I've soldered the joint here and here, I've faced off both sides and put it relatively, um, relatively round. It's not perfect but it's not too bad. I'm going to machine a recess into, into this and then I'm going to turn down this disc to drop into the recess. This is the rim of the dial bowl and these two parts need to be soldered together. And how I'm going to do that is to machine a recess into the uh, top of the ring here 
and then I'm going to turn down the uh, the disc here so that the recesses register the two parts together. That way I'm going to be able to run a bead of uh, solder in uh, with the whole thing bound together and uh, hopefully it will uh, it will solder, to get, solder together nicely. Uh, that, uh, that then means that I've got a lot more strength to hold this with in a chuck because at the moment it's possible for that to spring while I'm taking a cut on it and it's all a bit risky every time it's held in a chuck so uh, with it all soldered together like this it'll give me much more rigidity to be able to uh, do more machining work on this and turn it into the bowl. Well, most of that happened off camera because it was a bit of a, a mission, sort of grappled it on using clamps and a bench vise until it sort of snapped into place. So now what I'm going to do is just a, a little bit of a clean up and then I'm going to run some uh, lower temperature solder. I used a higher temperature solder for the joints here so hopefully they, they will remain un, undisturbed. Okay, so at the end of the first instalment we have here the bowl which I'm pretty pleased with as a, as a good starting point. Fabricated, soldered, uh, flat plate and then um, machined on the Smart & Brown 1024. So that's the first component. Uh, not complete, we've got to revisit it, but it's uh, as complete as it can be for now. And uh, in the next episode, you'll see how I started to make the uh, train uh, wheels uh, with uh, triangular tooth form. So uh, uh, that'll be coming up in the next episode. Thanks for watching.